Today we'll be making these from these using this and this. We'll be using a 100 millimeter chuck and a 4 inch rotary table. And we'll be using the rotary table by, by uh, disengaging its worm gear, which is done by loosening this screw and rotating the worm gear out, which allows you to turn this without turning, having to turn this. Makes this job much easier. Um, you could do it with this, but these these kind of run stiff, and it would take all day but uh, I've decided to do it by actually hand holding it and moving it around to do that first you center your table and this table is nice because that hole in the middle is so small I can do it with the center and edge finder that makes it convenient and after you have that centered you lock the table then with the table locked in these positions, go ahead and you put your chuck on, and you take a collet with a with a piece of stock in it, like a piece of three eighths. You put the collet into the mill, and you tighten the collet up, and then you drop your piece of stock in the in the same hole, and you crank down your chuck, and your chuck will center on the part. Well I can actually center on your alignment rod and then when, once you got that set in you can tighten these three screws down and after that's done you can then release the chuck. Wind the chuck out and move in the fixture that you're gonna make for your own part should that time ever come and place your fixture in. Since I'm radiusing 180 degrees. I will set my uh, scale on the rotary table at zero and lock it with the screw on the back side and then take an indicator and indicate on this edge to when you have it zero across. Once you have that set and your chuck is, you can final, finalize the tightening of, well you actually indicate off this, then after you have that you can tighten up your chuck on, on the side then you can mount your part. And this part, the shoulder of this bolt actually goes in to the fixture and aligns that and that keeps the distance set. Excuse the length of the bolt, my hardware store doesn't come in sizes I'd prefer. And then once you have it set into the mill, you drop in your end mill and you well actually before you even do you drop in your end mill you run this back you run it back the radius plus half plus half the uh, diameter of the mill in my case my mill was was uh, 250 quarter inch so I set it back 100 and 125 and that uh, brings it just to the edge and uh, then you back it out a little bit more because you're going to be cutting these ears off first. So then you you turn it. Oh, come on, you. Oh, I got you locked. There we go. Turn it and you buzz off a little bit of the, the corner. You go all the way around to that 180 degree. And you back it back up. 
and you move in a little bit and you take another small turn and you always end, end coming back gives you a cleaner surface and without saying much more on this I'm gonna show you how it was done and these are parts of my dynamic balancer so you got a little bit of rotary to your rotary table porn in here um, not, not all tables might have might be able to disengage but every one I run across has and when it's time time to, to finish you can re-engage the worm gear and it works as normal so there you have it and on with the show okay I'm centering up the table which I've already centered but there it is so the axis center of this table is now zero and zero let me turn on the DRO and set those And I will put the chuck on here, which is going to be fun because I don't have a lot as a lot on the z-axis as far as room, but I will make do. You take a nap while I go set that up. Well, I wound up using the uh, a piece of old end mill that broke off to uh, center the chuck by, by clamping down on it while it was in a collet and that seems to bring me in close I didn't have enough room to use my coaxial indicator on this thing I just don't have a lot, a lot of uh, room on the z-axis it is what it is you, when you buy cheap you get cheap uh, it's serviceable for a hobbyist but uh, life could be better with something a little bigger let me tell you okay I'm having to reach around this camera kind of a nuisance but this was the best I could get so I hope you're ready for it when doing it this way you always turn into the cutter if you turn with the cutter it has a chance to grab and break the cutter and maybe hurt you but going this way no kind of a heavy cut to start off and want to get rid of those corners. for a second, you know, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to come in about 20 thousandths and take another cut. All right, about there. I don't want to bite off too much.
some in a little more. taking anything off. It's more like a spring cut going back the other way. It does clean up the finish though. Fine milling always gives a, gives a better finish. You take her in a little bit more. thousands at a time as I approach it. A little smoother finish, a little nicer. Pinch down the Y and Y axis, bring it back through. It seems like it moved this time. I made these a little asymmetrical. I made one side a little long. Actually, both one side's 10 thousandths over, and the other side's uh, probably about closer to 30. I think we found it. We just about there. Give me 10 more. Slotting something in a curve like this, I wouldn't be doing it with my hands. Uh, I would first drill a circle and try to hog out as much material as I could to start. a little off center on the on the chuck, but it's the best I could do with what I had on hand, so it is what it is. These are not critical even as far as appearance or size, other than the fact that they have to be one inch or less on the diameter of the 
Well, on the radius, it's got to be a half inch radius. I'm taking out the rest of the clearance from the other pieces. Just a wee bit under, but I'm going to clean them up a little bit. Time to come out of the hole. And yeah, we're back at the desk, and here you can see where the tool is, has cut the radius. And right now I'm going to take off the piece. You cut deeper than the parts you're making, that way you make sure you got the part all the way cut to the bottom. Otherwise, you may get a rude surprise when you take this off. Like half of a half of a still square end. Okay, a little little filing is in order here. We'll be burring. No, I don't cut too far back in there, but I cut close enough. I use the uh, DRO to tell me when I've gone through, but I do try to cut as least as I can. Now these will these will go through a polisher, a tumbler, and they'll get cleaned up some. And uh, the bearings get pressed in. Let's see, do I got? No, not enough room. I got to press these in. They're they're definitely press fit, and that takes care of these. These will swing on these quarter inch bolts inside a framework, back and forth, and so it does what I ask it to do. The curved parts will be hid. You'll never even see them. I don't know why I bothered to make, to do them like that instead of just sand or grind them but yeah I did want it to look nice 